everybody welcome back to the channel uh i forgot to hit the damn start record button again in obs <laughs> but this time i remembered it after only like a minute i didn't get through the whole video like i did yesterday this is getting ridiculous i'm gonna have to put a sticky note to my forehead or something it's, <laughs> it's dumb anyway so uh on this channel i do some tutorials uh and I label them as tutorials because usually when I do a tutorial, I know what I'm doing. It's a pretty well established assumption that if you're going to teach somebody some, how to do something, the teacher knows how to do it. Um, other times I do these learn along with me style uh, videos where I set myself a task uh, and I have no idea how to accomplish t the task, and I just do the video in hopes that you learn from my mistakes. That's what today's video is going to be. Today we're going to get started with Xmonad. Now Xmonad is a dynamic tiling window manager. I think maybe that's what you call it. It's a tiling window manager for sure. I'm just not sure if it's dynamic or not. I think it's like DWM and Spectre WM or whatever in terms of how it tiles. I've only been using it for about five minutes. I've got so far as to install it. I've got it running on bare metal uh, in, in Arco. I've found the, the configuration files and I've changed the configuration file so that the mod key is the Windows key and not the alt key. And uh, I've also changed it so that the binding to quit the Windows is um, a little bit different. So. Um, because it, it, it's like mod shift C or something is, is the default. I just want mod Q. Um, I also got mod shift Q to quit Q tile and mod shift. I think mod shift Q is to restart. I don't know. I've changed it. That's the point. That, but that's all I've done. Um, I have found that the, um, I did try to change the default terminal. I have not succeeded in doing that yet. Um, so that's going to be one of the things. So here are the things that I want to do today. I want to, so let's actually just jump into the, so you can see what, actually what I'm doing here. This is Xmonad. This is, um, that's literally all you get. Um, there's no bar. There's nothing. The, this wallpaper here is just a, uh, the default um, Arco Linux wallpaper. I'm not sure why it's there because usually you just get a black screen. Um, so I don't know how that's being pulled up or wh where it's being pulled up from. Um, but I don't have even a wallpaper really set yet. I don't have a bar. Um, but the things I want to do today, I want to get a bar. I want to get it so that when I has, hit mod enter, I actually get a uh, terminal, which right now I do not. Um, I do want to make sure that I'm actually recording because I'm, I'm going to be one of those people that's stupid and I have to check two or three times. My OCD just is not, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I want to bar, t terminal. I also would like to do some coloring, you know, because right now if we do um, mod P, which is D menu, which I'm going to have to change that to and open up terminal, you know, the long way. This border right here is red. I want to get rid of that. Um, and probably match my Dracula theme right now. Um, and I also want to, if I have time on this video, uh, transfer some of the key bindings over to an SXHKD file, which means I'm going to have to figure out how Xmonad does auto start files. Um, so we got a little bit of road ahead of us. I don't know how much of it I will get done in this video. Um, I'm assuming that this is probably going to be part one of me messing around with Xmonad. Uh, so just make sure you subscribe and hit the notification icon if you want to see part two, um, if this doesn't turn out to be a complete farce, which it may, may very well be. So um, Xmonad stores its configuration files in .xmonad in the home directory. Okay, and this is what the file looks like. It has some things here. Um, now my Xmonad config is uh, xmonad.hs, and this is just the, the bog standard default configuration files, which I believe comes from this folder here. I actually found it on the internet because I didn't know that folder was there. I just found that out right now. <laughs> so uh, that's how, like I said, that's how smart I am. So we just, and we'll make this bigger. 
I think that should be big enough. Yeah. Okay, so... For those of you who don't know, X Monad is written in Haskell. I know absolutely jack shite about Haskell. Now, for some reason, the first let's first see if we can troubleshoot why the terminal thing is not working. Because... Because termite should work. Um... I think that's the class, so it might, maybe the, maybe the class is, um, different. So let's, uh, open up xprop. So let's do, a control P terminal, termite. Okay, and xprop. Alright, so, let's see if we, if we do this with a capital T, if that works. Change letter, okay, and write... Right, quit. I'm going to just write quit and do xmonad recompile. Okay, so it did succeed, which is good. Okay, so if we do mod shift and q, that should do. Now, if I do mod enter, no, mod enter did nothing. Oh, you want to? I bet you there's a conflicting key binding. I think I did see that because you notice when I press mod enter. The window is switched around. Ah, I bet you. I bet you. Okay, so what if I do mod shift enter? No. Okay, so the uh, K. What the hell? Where'd my config file go? Oh, it's because I'm in the wrong. Uh, close that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So V. Okay, and then let's go down here to the key bindings. I bet you I have a duplicate. So I have right now. I have. Mod shift return should start a terminal. Mod shift return does not do that. Why mod shift return should terminal.com. I'm I don't know anything about Haskell. This doesn't make any sense because my term if they define up here they defer, defined the terminal as my terminal. But down here we're we have the launch the terminal thing. They don't use that variable. They just use terminal. Weird. Okay, but still. Right now I have mod enter. Mod enter swaps the master around. Um. So what if we just commented that out for right now, and we'll come back to to. We'll just come, we'll, eventually we'll find a different, because uh, mod enter for, to swap the master around is just really weird. Why don't you use mod and a vim key or something? Um, anyway, so, why don't we just, you want to run it? We'll just do this. We will, oops. We will, we'll leave this and do comma. So these are the two. Um, parentheses, mod m, okay, comma, and we'll do some spaces here, x, k underscore return, parentheses, comma, spawn, termite. I mean, what's it going to hurt? We'll see if that works. Okay, and we'll right quit this here and we'll recompile. That did. Oh, you want know to? It would help if I if I actually, you know. Oops. Typos are the the dickens. <laughs> I actually got to spell things right. How, who knew? Because that's actually really cool. Um, when you make an error, it shows you exactly where it is. It doesn't do that in DWM, or um, even Qtile doesn't do that. Now, um, i3 will do that, That's if you have it set up properly. Um, okay, so actually, see, look at this. I spelled spawn with an M. So change letter N. 
like a moron Q and now we can recompile and now we and now do mod shift Q and mod enter huzzah now that's only for temp temporarily because eventually that can be deleted and moved to SXHKD which I'm going to use okay so quit out of that and back into our config file so the next thing we have to do is go to a different workspace. So we'll just go to six here and open up mod P and Firefox. All right. And we're in Firefox. Now we need to learn how to use XMOBAR. Or do we want to use, let's see, how to uh, use auto start in XMONAD. I'll start programs in XMonad. I, I want to start some programs in XMonad. I've read that you have to write them in a .x session file. The problem is that they will all be auto started in my other window managers too. That's dumb. There's no way that's true. If that is true, that's dumb. I'm currently configuring testing in XMonad, so I don't want to affect the startup programs in my other window managers I have. Is there another way? Use .xnrc. You can have a look at the X session of the root, for example. You really have to use .x and .nrc. There's no other way to do, to do auto start files in. Because X and .nrc is going to be used for every window manager. If you use slim, what the fuck is slim? Then it will send. Let's zoom this in so people can read it. If you lose, use slim, then it will send a session name as an argument to the X and Because I know you can use different X and RC files, maybe. I think I saw that on a video somewhere, but still. No, that's not what I want. Hmm. The other option would be to use the startup hook in your xmonad.hs. I'm using the first method, though, so best ask someone, okay, so startup hook, we want to search Google for startup hook, um, xmonad, uh, zooming in, okay, let's see here, do, 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 so do start up. Okay, right here. Easy enough. Modifying the okay, so to run a desktop the desktop startup hook plus add further actions to be run each time X monad starts or restarts, use the plus I don't know what that means. To combine actions as in the log hood example, something like this. Comma startup. Alright, so let's go ahead and go to, to one here and search for startup hook. That's the only. Okay, let you wanna let's go look at DT's. I mean, when in doubt, look at DT's config file. So we'll do this one here. And I, I happen to have his dot files downloads CD downloads. Get things. DT dot ls CD dot files. S. Okay, so cd.xmonad ls. Okay, so then xmonad.hs. Okay, so start up hook. And that's the only startup hook he is. Because if he's, he has autos. Hey, look at that. I learned how to make video make windows bigger. Cool. Okay, I don't know what any of these things mean. Mm hmm. Well, that's a lot of stuff, DT. That's a lot of stuff. Holy hell.
Okay, I don't know what the tra oh, tree selection is going to be for that menu that he did. Um, that doesn't do me any good. My startup hook do. Okay, this is what I want to do. Um, what if I... Okay, that's good. Alright, so let's do this. Um, okay. My startup hook equals do. Okay. So I'm going to change that to, to, at the dollar sign. Let's see here. So do. Okay. I'm not going to add this line here, but I'm probably going to end up having to. Because mine doesn't have that by default, but let's just see. All right, so we want to do spawn once. And we do want to, uh, let's see. Ah. Quotation marks, nitrogen, dash dash restore, ampersand, okay. Spawn once, PyCom, yep, and the ampersand, okay, did I spell that right, S, S no, see, look at this, that's better, <laughs> Do there, does there need to be a, a space after the ampersand, no, okay, spawn, I almost did it again, once, and we want, um, Hmm. S X H K D. Oh, uh, I can't remember. I think I'm gonna hold on off on S S H K D because I'm gonna have to go look and see what the flag is in order to for, to, to uh, it's either gonna be dash C or dash dash config. I can't remember which one it is. Um, I think that's good right there. Okay, so let's, um, we may end up having to do this line here. I'm not sure yet. We'll move. Chrome okay, and then X one add recompile. That did not work. Variable not in scope. Spawn once. So I bet you... Hmm. Okay, well, you want know to We'll try again. my startup hook okay and we will do this my startup hook yep two colons x and this here okay and see if that will allow it to compile no still won't okay variable not in scope what does that mean? I don't know Haskell. My my limitations in Haskell are proving to be my downfall. Okay, so let's go back to um. So this is one. I think I was on six for the browser, without a bar telling me where my damn. Uh, okay, so that works the same way as the other ones. All right, <laughs> you got some little artifacting over here. Um, this is the way it, sh it, it startup hook do. It doesn't call it my startup hook, it just calls it startup hook. Mm. Do, do, do. Well, let's go see if this works instead. Because I'm using, I'm not using DT's uh, config file, I'm using the default one, so it makes sense to do because this one doesn't have spawn once, it just says startup hook desktop config, spawn, okay. Let's go back to one, and get rid of these, okay. We can get rid of DTs, because his obviously don't, his thing doesn't actually work. Okay, my startup. Okay, so 
we will delete this line here and just call this startup hook. Okay. And I think that's what it was, a startup hook equal to with a capital H. Yep. Weird syntax. Uh, I can't believe I've already been recording for 20 minutes. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Okay, so if I wanted to do... I'm assuming desktop config is a program, and this is how you do a script. But I bet you if you spawn... I bet you spawn is done for the same way as the program. Okay, so we just use spawn. Okay, so go back to one. Okay. I'm going to leave the ampersand and see if that works. I'm going to take the ampersand out. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't... Probably going to need to put the ampersand back in. I'm... I'm okay, x1 add recompile. Still no. Okay, ambiguous recurrence. Could we further to, to start up hook? Oh, I'm so so confused. So if we let's go in here and call it my startup hook then. That worked. Okay, so if we quit this out here and do mod shift Q, ha ha ha, that worked. Um, and my preview for <laughs> for OBS died, so I'm hoping that my um recording is still going. But uh, that worked because I I know it worked because huzzah, here's my wallpaper. Okay, and turn my and PyCom is working because I have transparency. Ah, we're so good. Okay, so now I need to go check and see. So cd dot dwm sxhkd vim sxhkd rc. I wanted to see. Well, that's not what I needed to do. That's the wrong one. So cd dot uh, vim auto start. Here we go. So this is what I want to need to check. For SXHKD, it's dash. It's the dash C flag. Okay, so what we want to do here is go to. Um, we want to quit this. Actually, we're just going to spawn another one and make this bigger. So, cd into dot x monad and make directory SXHKD. Okay, and uh, cd into that directory SXHKD. And we're going to touch sxhkdrc, okay? And we're going to then we're going to quit this, okay? And we're going to vim sxhkdrc, and we're going to open a vertical split of. Um, let's see here. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter there because the top ones are going to be the same anyways. So if we do. Um, uh, Tilde slash dot dwm sxhkd sxhkdrc okay and we and go into visual mode here and while that transparency really makes it hard for um, so what we're gonna do is uh, go all the way down here to the non we can yeah we can leave those there I think we want the volume ones. And honestly, I'm pretty sure all this stuff can actually go right here. It doesn't matter. So technically, I could have just used this file. But we'll do uh, yank. And we'll do... Uh, let's see. Okay. And we'll do... Um, oops. Oh, no. I was in the wrong one, apparently. we got to do some undo. Okay, so... Visual mode, uh, capital G, uh, yank. Okay, and we need to do, go into the other uh, buffer, which is this one here, I think, and paste. There we go. 
Okay, and then we just uh, write quit that and write quit that. We can just quit that. Okay. All right, and then we want to do uh, CD up a level and vim into oops x oops xmonad.hs and do my startup hook okay and we want to do this spawn I right, gonna quotation marks sxhkd dash c tilde slash dot con xmonad slash sxhkd ah Mark in line like that, okay? And slash sxhkdrc. Why does it do that every time? Bah humbug. Okay. Now uh, we need to do some removing of uh, key bindings here. So we want to um, get out of, of insert mode. We want to remove this one here. So dd. We want to remove the menu. Um, we definitely want to keep this open so I can undo these changes just in case. Okay, when we remove that one, uh, we want to remove. Hmm. I'm going to keep the kill one because I don't. I think that's good. this is going to be a different one. Um, I don't think. Uh, let's see. We want to remove do do do. We want to remove none of these rest ones. I don't think I don't think I'd remove any of these other ones. Um, nope. I think we can just leave all of that for now, because I don't think that I'm going to be in, do be able to do any X monad specific key bindings like um, this uh, recompile thing. Uh, you know, with SXHKD. I just don't think that that's going to be possible. So we should be able to do this. W, we're right, because we're going to stay in this and open up a new one here and do xmonad dash at recompile. And that worked. Okay, so we do mod shift and Q. And now we should, we should be able to still do mod enter for Yes, yes. SXHKD success. This is a, a successful video so far, as long as I remember to repress the record button. <laughs> All right, so we can quit out of that, and um, we want to keep we can keep that open. We want to um, okay. So the, the last thing we want to do before maybe maybe mess around with colors. I mean, we're at um, twenty eight minutes so far in this video. Wow. Uh, I want to see if I can do do it, get a bar running. So, the question I have is, do I use XMO bar? So, if we go here to uh, our things here and search for XMO bar, uh, so XMO bar continues to. We have a tutorial here. Wow. Okay. Cool. Well, this looks like the Qtile uh, config file or um documentation here's what's inside my at dot x mobar rc okay so blah 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 okay i don't know what any of those things mean you just run weather i mean it, a little weird okay that's a lot of options let's break it down here so border color this defines border color is black tell this person is british there's an extra letter in the word color uh border is draws a border background colors defines the background color that's really easy but it doesn't say where to put this do 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 so you know, like i can download xmo xmo bar from the uh um what i'm thinking about doing is just using polybar why can't i just use polybar why do I have to make myself, you know, why must I hurt myself so badly trying to learn something new 
<laughs> I mean, why why push myself to learn X Mobar when I could just use what I know? Um, I think for now that's exactly what I'm going to do. So we'll go back here, and we'll because uh, we're going to need two terminals. So we we want to go to my startup hook coop. I wonder what the key binding is to switch focus. So right now I don't really don't want to have to use my freaking mouse every time. I suppose we could mod K is focus sync. So that's gonna change mod it's mod JK. Mod JK. Oh there we go. Ha ha ha. Hey look at this. I'm learning stuff. Alright. So slash my startup hook. Okay, and we want to do this. Okay. Spawn. Um, oh man, I can't remember. I think it's. I think you just have to use. I. You just have to do the launch dash sh command. So what I want to do here is. Um, man, I don't know if that's gonna work. Do I still have X Monad? I think I do. So if I do um, cd dot config polybar. Uh, and then then config slash x x monad. I do good. Okay, so what I should should be able to do is get out of this and just do um, ls. If we just go over here and do um, launch tilde slash dot config slash polybar slash launch dot sh. Okay and do colon w and we'll go over here and cd like here and x monad dash dash recompile i think actually when i think if i just do i think i looked and saw just now that if i just do mod shift q that actually recompiles it all automatically that didn't work spawn okay i bet you if um Okay, we can close this, go to six, and um, go backwards. Right here, the that should be, X monad sh. It won't let you do. So it won't let you do a a a. Mm, Very confused. So you, so you can't use spawn. I don't want to move this to path. I really don't want to because I have mult. I I use polybar in in BSPWM as well, and I have that as its own configuration file. So I don't want. Uh, I mean, I could. The Theoretically, I could move it to, to path, but call it something differently. But I don't want to do that. Hmm. So the startup hook here, this would be calling a... This is going to be a, a script as well. But these are all... I bet you both of these are going to be in the, this person's path. Hmm. What does this mean? I don't know what that means. Okay. Uh, all right, so um, we're gonna stop there for now. This is this video has gone on for thirty five minutes. <laughs> uh, we were not successful with the bar, but overall, pretty successful. We've got a lot of key bindings changed. We can uh, close this and go back to one. Uh, we got some auto start things working, which is muy bueno, so good. Um, I haven't got that you know working yet, but the poly bar, but I will. Uh, the next time I do a video on X one, we'll work on the bar. We'll work on the coloring and do some doing some ricing. Uh, that'll probably be in January. 
when I get to that because I got a whole list of videos I'm going to be doing, but that's still overly very successful. So if you enjoyed this long meandering video on how to do things that I didn't know how to do, give us a thumbs up or give us a thumbs down if you really hated it for some odd reason. I mean, thumbs downs are so not nice. I mean, just be nice and give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for when the eventual part two of this video comes out and we continue to do uh, my explorations of the Xmonad. Uh, and also the notification icon, notification bell icon thing will al alert you to videos that uh, I upload because I do upload uh, new videos every single day. Uh, some of them are tutorials, some of them are rants, some of them are we do a weekly podcast. Um, and I'm s still working on increasing production value. I hope I've... Uh, if you watched the first few videos that I did this, um, these are definitely better. <laughs> Not that much better, but they're better. Uh, and they're even better when I remember to press the record button, which I did do this time. I've checked four or five times now. <laughs> okay. So anyways, um, hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, yep, Audacity is still recording. <laughs> I would have been so mad. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.